read for Rebel News in Surrey, British Columbia, home of the infamous, litigious, violent transgender activist Jonathan Yaniv. You remember him. He's of Wax My Balls fame. And I'm here today because Yaniv had a court appearance for two counts of possession of a prohibited weapon. The charges stem from the time when Yaniv, in front of the entire world, showed off his taser in a YouTube live stream debate with trans YouTuber Blair White in August 2019. Here, take a look at this for yourself. I'm going to talk, I'm gonna... which is illegal in Canada, just saying. But you think that was like cute? Was that a moment for you? No, that wasn't a moment for me. Now, police found two conductive energy devices in Yaniv's home after executing a warrant to search the premises. So again today, I hopped an early flight to Vancouver, hired my two really great security professionals who are watching over me as I shoot this video, and I headed to the courthouse. Yaniv has assaulted two of my colleagues in the past, David Menzies and Kian Bexty, and they were both assaulted on camera, so I'm not taking any chances with my safety. These pros kept me safe last time when Jonathan, <laughs> when Jonathan ran away from me and his mommy lunged at me. Take a look at what happened last time I was at the courthouse. Jonathan, are you going to plead guilty to assaulting my colleague, Kian Bexty? Rebel media. Rebel media. Hey! No, no. Don't, can't keep you your hands off whoa, me. Whoa, whoa. You go are you going to plead guilty whoa. for assaulting my colleague, Kian Bexty? Jonathan! Are you going to plead guilty no, for assaulting my colleague, Kian no, Bexty? Jonathan, are you going to plead guilty to the weapons charges against you? Now, I really love that video because look at how scared Yaniv is when he's confronted by a woman who isn't scared of him and his unshaven testicles. He runs, his once crippled legs miraculously healed by my presence, and he hid behind his mommy. I also hired a lawyer again today. When Kean was here, he was denied access to the courthouse behind me by the sheriffs at the request of Jonathan Yaniv. So someone from our Vancouver law firm met me at the courthouse to make sure that I had access to the courtroom the way any journalist would. But it wasn't necessary. Here's what I can tell you about what happened at the courthouse today. Jonathan Yaniv had his court appearance bumped up to this morning with no notice. In fact, his appearance was still on the official docket for this afternoon. He had his newly hired lawyer come to address the matter this morning and had it put over until February 24th. Just more manipulating the system from Jonathan Yaniv to protect himself from any form of accountability. Now, Rebel News, as you can tell, we're incurring a lot of costs because of Jonathan Yaniv. Because Yaniv has assaulted both Kian and David, I was the one on our team that had to fly out to Surrey to catch Yaniv at the courthouse. And I didn't even get a chance to catch him. Again, I had not one, but two security people to keep me safe. They did their jobs perfectly last time. And again, they did their jobs great today. You see, Yaniv is a big angry fella and his mom is a little ball of out of control rage. They couldn't hurt me like they have hurt so many men and women too. My security kept me safe last time while staying out of the way so that I could do my job. And once again, I've incurred legal costs. I had to hire that lawyer to be sure that we had physical access to attend the hearing today, even though the hearing was moved up. And as you'll recall last time, my lawyer was especially helpful when Yaniv called the cops one more time to abuse the emergency services system to shelter himself from accountability. What a nuisance Yaniv is. He's a burden on the entire system and a menace to the public. I also have flight expenses for a wasted day in Vancouver because Yaniv is gaming the system one more time. But this is what we have to do to do our journalism without being assaulted or banned. No other media company has to go through all this. Yet the other companies whine about mean tweets and vulgar cat calls. We get assaulted with steel canes. I get punched by male feminists, shoved by union activists. And the police don't seem to give a damn. Or in the case of David Menzies, the cops are the ones doing the roughing him up. And in the case of Ezra Levant, the cops stepped in to protect a confessed Al-Qaeda terrorist from questions about his airline travel inside of a Canadian airport. 
the sheriffs have banned our reporters because Yaniv laughably tells obvious lies about us. Things that are just so outrageous, they could not possibly be true, but we get banned anyways. Now, as you know, we filed a lawsuit against Jonathan Yaniv for assaulting Kean and David, and that'll probably cost us $50,000. It's a lot of money. Sounds crazy. But is it any less crazy than allowing Yaniv to continue terrorizing people across the lower mainland of British Columbia? The cops aren't doing anything, so we have to. You can see the details of our lawsuit at yanivtrial.com. Do you think the CBC would ever report on this abusive troll the way we are? No, they haven't, they won't, and they wouldn't. Jonathan checks just too many social justice boxes for the CBC to report on him. Now you can help cover the cost to do accountability journalism on Jonathan Yaniv at yanivtrial.com. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunreid. I had to fly out to Surrey, British Columbia this morning, hire two security professionals and a lawyer just to be safe enough to try to ask Jonathan Yaniv a question to help cover the cost to send me here and to support our lawsuit against that public menace, Jonathan Yaniv, please go to yanivtrial.com.